The light bulb was the worst part of all of this. What? On a scale of zero to 10, madame, this, the pain is at 12. <laughs> no, 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 no. The pain is the pain, the pain is the pain. What the heck? I do, and I'm entitled to say that. That's what I wanna say. It's my body, it's my mouth, it's my platform. I'm gonna say it. Okay, let's jump into the video. We're doing a QA, and a obviously, as you already know. I'll do my best to answer all of them. So let's just jump in and we're gonna do some makeup while we do it. So as you may already know, I had a surgical procedure done almost two months ago and I asked you on IG, follow on IG and actually on TikTok as well. I asked you to let me know what questions you had about the procedure. If you don't know already, I also have a playlist with all of the episodes. I call them episodes. All the episodes about the surgical procedure because I did document it because it was important for me to just keep it real and share in case you yourself are just nosy, <laughs> which I get, or uh, are actually planning on getting any of the procedures that I did done. So I had a mastopexy and abdominoplasty and 360 lipo. All right, just FYI. First question is, did you consider doing the surgery somewhere else? that was cheaper, X, for example, Florida or abroad? That's a good question and the answer is no. I did not consider doing it elsewhere simply because I wanted to be able to come back home. I didn't want the risks of doing it elsewhere. I knew that if I did it elsewhere, I wouldn't be able to have access to my doctor the way that would make me feel happy. And really and truly, I wanted to come back to my house. I didn't want to be in a recovery house. I also didn't want to be somewhere else. It's just too much. The procedure in and of itself is frightening enough, let alone being somewhere else. And then I've heard of stories watched videos where things didn't go well. And so the answer was an absolute no for me. Not to mention, I chose my doctor because she did awesome work on a friend of mine. But knowing someone that had a successful procedure done here in Houston was enough for me to be like, listen, I'm gonna pay the extra money and just stay here because why? This is too much. This is too much. So yeah, no, 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 no. I, I don't believe in discount services when it comes to this kind of surgery. It is very serious and I don't believe in getting it done cheaper. I just don't because yes, I would have saved a lot of money, but nah, I wouldn't have been as comfortable. And if you've seen my surgery series, then you have seen me talk about an experience I have where I met someone who went to someone who was very cheap. Well, she still paid a lot of money actually. When it all comes down to it, when you factor in everything else that you pay for outside of the actual procedure, Procedure. She still paid a lot of money, you feel me? But she went elsewhere and got it done. And when I met her, she was very displeased. So it doesn't always make the most sense to pay something cheaper. Like it's just not worth it. It really just is not worth it. Which practice did you go to? Seriously considering the same procedures. I went to Dr. Sato here in Houston and all the information will be below. Dr. Sato here in Houston is where I went. And like I said, I went with her based off of the work that she had done on a friend of mine and she did a fantastic job. And I am very, very satisfied. <laughs> Does it affect your food consumption? That is a great question. I have found that my stomach, first of all, it's getting looser. The tightness is getting looser, which is fantastic. Now, when I say getting looser, I don't mean that the sewing that was done is now getting loose. No, but the tightness that I would feel in my abdomen is not as tight as it used to be, which is a good thing because it was just like too much. So it already just feels so tight, making me not able to eat as much as I used to be able to eat, which is a phenomenal thing because even with the surgery and before, if you've been here, then you already know. I'm on keto, been on keto for years, still on keto. I don't plan on changing keto. This this is not a weight loss surgery. It's a body contouring surgery. So this is not something to do to lose weight. And it's not something to do to maintain weight loss either. It is something simply to contour the body because it's extra skin. I had the diastasis. So sewing that back together again, but this is not something that's going to guarantee any kind of weight loss. So that's something to note. This is not a procedure to do because you want to lose weight. No, ma'am. Mm -mm. You will just have, a, hopefully if, if you have the same kind of results, a snatched waist. I had a breast lift also. So you'll have a snatched waist, a lifted set of breasts, and you can still be chubby. If, but if that's okay with you, that's okay with you. But if you're trying to lose weight, this is not a weight loss procedure at all whatsoever. How long does it take to heal completely? Well, the heal, I, I don't know, maybe the word heal might get me tripped up, but I know that the results are gonna continue to evolve. Oh, and I'm not mentioning the actual products, excuse me. That was the Estee Lauder Foundation. And then I used the <laughs> Kofi Concealer. And this is Say Bronzer in the shade Dark Bronze. So the results are gonna continue to change 
change, develop, I don't know what you call it, up into a year. And she said maybe even a few months after the year, okay? So that's that. However, I was cleared to work out at four weeks, but I didn't go work out and I was excited to go work out, but I didn't go work out at four weeks because I still had on the garment and the boards and I was just like, I'm not about to go to the gym with all of this on, you feel me? So then when I had gone to my doctor appointment at five weeks and she cleared me to wear the Skims undergarment underwear thing, I was like, bet, this is way more comfortable. In fact, it's actually washing right now. So I don't have it on right now. So when I was cleared to wear that, I was like, oh, this is so much better. I feel so much more free. So then I said, okay, now I'm gonna go to the gym. So that was week five. It is now what, week seven or eight? I gotta go look at the calendar. So I went to the gym today actually for the first time and it was great. I was exhausted. I mean, think about it. You've even worked out in two months. It's exhausting. My legs feel like they're gonna give out on me. So I already know that tomorrow is gonna be so unbearable. I just, I hate the whole thing. I really hate the whole thing, you know? But to be honest with you, even today in the gym, when I was doing planks and bicycles, I felt comfortable. My abdomen feels tight, yes, but in a good way. It didn't feel uncomfortable to me. So yes, I'm cleared to work out. Yes, I'm cleared to do ab workouts, just not crunches is what I was told. I was told this back when I did my, what, my consultation in July, because I had a lot of questions. I was like, can I get abs afterward? I still work out, I'm gonna still work out. I need to know what's going on. And that's what I was told. So very, very exciting. How do you feel now? Any more pain? I feel fantastic. The only pain I still feel at almost two months now is the pain in my skin from the lipo. And I've said this so many times, the lipo is the problem. It's not the tummy tuck at all. My breasts were giving me some tingling pain sensations sometimes, but that has dissipated. It's really the lipo. So for instance, my back still feels tight at the lower section and I'm stretching to see if I like reach over in the car, if something falls down, I reach over. If I'm gonna put on the fitted sheet on a mattress, I feel some stretching in my back. So the skin still feels a little bit tender. It's not terrible, but even right now, yeah, it feels, it just feels tender. It feels sore, the skin, not the muscles. I didn't do anything to my back in terms of muscles. It's just the skin. So that, oh man, like that I was not expecting. I was not expecting from my skin, from the lipo to feel so sore. Like what? I mean, I, I, I don't know. Like, up until now, or at least this long, I was not expecting for it to be like this this long. So that is the thing that, this is Glowish Medium Tan 06. That is the thing that always stops me in my tracks. Like, oh, my back. You know, when I used to get up from the bed, cause I, I still sleep on my back. I sometimes go to my side, but I've been on my back mainly for two months. So I'm just used to it now. So when I get up from sleeping on my back, just imagine, oh my gosh, it's like waking up all the nerves and it would hurt, yo. So it, that has gotten better. It doesn't hurt anymore when I get up, but just imagine from sitting on my, from laying on my back for so long, there's a discomfort when I get up. So yeah, it's just really that. Otherwise, no, no pain at all. Did the tummy tuck feel like a cesarean? Oh my God, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It felt like a cesarean, but worse. But here's the thing, you know, cause I also had the lipo, yo man. I know that I'm saying that a lot. Even when I edit my videos, I'm like, dang girl, you are beating a dead horse. But I need to tell you, the lipo was the worst part of all of this. I'm not kidding, okay? <laughs> like, I just really want Wonder. I'm not even kidding. I really, really wonder if any of you have had a BBL, which is just the lipo and then the, ins the insertion, the lipo part on your 360 lipo part. Please comment and let me know. What was that like for you? Okay. You know, how did you feel at week two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two months, one, one year, whatever? I want to know because, of course, I had 360 lipo and tummy tuck. I don't know. I'm just so curious because I'm telling you, the lipo was my problem. Okay. Even the incision now, that area is even still numb. So, anyway. Back to the very beginning. Did it feel like a C-section? Absolutely. Because you know you, you can't cough, you can't use your abdomen because you need your abs to get up and down. If you have diastasis, you already recognize how important the core is. I have to say, like I said, I was still working out, so I still had abs even though I had diastasis. Because I know for some people, they find it hard with the diastasis to pick up things, to just like live their everyday life. I didn't have that issue. I was still doing ab workouts. I was still working out. You know, I was still moving and shaking. I was still doing what I had to do, right? Because I didn't even know I had diastasis until I had go to the doctor and then I had a consultation with doctor and she was yeah you do have it and I was like excuse me I mean I wasn't I, I just I could not believe it I could not believe it right so mine I don't know if it was considered bad or good or whatever it was I had it right so I, I wanted to get it corrected and I'm glad I did get it corrected so I say all this because I still was able to use my abs and do things before the surgery now does it feel like a c-section yes because you need your abs to move around
now and it's extremely uncomfortable and painful when you try to get up and sit down and just cough and laugh and everything, sniffle, just like everything, right? In the very beginning. And then it got easier. It got easier. I would say like after a week, it was easier. Now, when I say easier, that's relative, right? Watch my surgery playlist and you'll watch the videos. You'll see that I keep on reminding people that I have a high tolerance for pain. So even though like what, at day six I was editing and I had stopped my codone, you feel me? I could still feel pain. I wasn't in absolute bliss, but I did not want to be on the codone anymore. You feel me? And that was just my choice and I can tolerate pain. I wasn't like dying, but I could tolerate it. So I say all this because yes, I had a C-section. Yes, it was painful. Yes, it is reminiscent of a C-section, just like worse, <laughs> but you know, I tolerated it well. I will say that I tolerated it well and it was worth it. It was worth it every step of the way. It was worth it, girl, it was worth it. Someone asks, is the price based on how much they remove? Like, did y'all plan which waist size would be best? <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good question because you would think that it would be like breasts, right? Where it's like, I don't know, some, some CC is gonna be da, da 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 I don't even know anything about that. I got a breast lift, no implants. So I don't know, but no, no, no. It's not based on how much they're gonna remove. It would, she, we did a consultation and she looked at me naked and took her notes on whatever she got to do. But I don't believe it's based on your size. It's just based on the actual procedure. That's my guess. But you got to go to a consultation with whatever doctor you choose and they can tell you. But no, it wasn't based on that. And But the thing that people need to understand, and I'll, I'm happy to explain it, right, is that all of our bodies are different. And some people like me, thank God, I won't lie, okay? Thank God. We have a small waist inevitably. So no matter how much belly fat you have, you'll see people who, when they lose weight, the waist is snapped. And she explained this to me literally the morning of the surgery. And if I remember correctly, what this is what she said. When you have a big distance between your rib cage and your hip bone, like touch your body, the rib cage and the hip bone. When there's a big distance between those two, when you lose weight, when you snatch it up, when you wear a waist trainer, that area is gonna go in because there's nothing there. Skin and muscles and tendons, yeah. But there's the rib cage, and then there's the hip bone. And so right here in the middle, where the belly button is, right here in the middle, just imagine a, a Capri Sun, <laughs> squeezed. So thank the Lord, I have that body type. Where the middle, there's a space. So when I lose weight, when I suck in my stomach, when I would put on a waist trainer or whatever, that area would be boop. So when you remove the extra skin and the fat, and you isolate out that area, that is how I have such a small waist. Maybe doctors can create that illusion. I I don't know, but I know for me, she said from jump, oh, you're gonna look amazing. Because <laughs> she's like, you already have a small waist. And I was like, oh my God, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> How much did it cost in the doctor details? Again, Dr. Sato, my Houston surgeons below, and it costs close to $30,000. On the write up, or whatever you call it, where the, the, in, say, the estimate, it breaks down what each cost is, right? So, cost for the mastopexy, cost for the abdominoplasty, cost for the garment, cost for the anesthesia operation, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's why I had three major things done, I guess, if you will. I had the mastopexy, abdominoplasty, and 360 lipo. Oh, I also had lipo to my right here this area like it's just all these different things okay so yeah when you go to your consultation with whatever doctor you choose when they give you your write-up your estimate it should break down everything it should break down every single thing that they're going to do and the cost of it so if you feel like it's too much for you then you can take out some things right but, like i can't imagine having done the tummy tuck without 360 lipo now i know people do it it'll be cheaper but my goodness the results are not going to look the same that's why I, I even have to remind myself that when i say it it's not just tummy tuck because if you go in and say i want a tummy tuck they're going to leave all your back fat they, hell they might even leave your Flanks. The flex is the spare tire. Okay, so you have to be specific. Like you go to a consultation and then you look at them, they look at you and you tell them what you want and they're gonna be making a note. Okay, that's the this, that's the this, that is this, this is that. I don't know every doctor and everything in the whole world, but I would like to think that this stuff is really separate and you have to be specific and when you're explaining to them what you want and then they'll tell you what it, what it costs because tummy tuck does not come with 360 lipo. And 360 lipo is literally a circle, the whole circle around your abdomen. So if you don't get 360 lipo and you just get a tummy tuck and you have back fat still going on, you know, the bra fat and all that stuff, it, it's just not gonna look the same. But I understand how perhaps price constraints might make you feel like, oh, let me, let me, let me cut that out. But let me tell you right now, it ain't gonna look the same. If it were me, I would feel like I should have just done it all at one time. I would not want to now have to go back or do something like, let's just get this all done now. If I had no choice and I had to do it all over again, I would do it again. But I don't want to, so I would not want 
to have to deal with all this again. So I would just prefer to have that light bulb done 360 now. You feel me? How long did you have to keep the drains in? Okay, so I shared this in the, the episodes as well. The drains, let me think. I had gone to, was it two weeks or was it three weeks? It might've been three. Between two and three weeks is how long I had those drains in. And girl, oh my God, I could not wait to take them out. I really just wanted to just wear stuff without those drains. Cause I, I had to pick my outfits around the drains. I had to wear loose stuff. Cause the drains, like it's just, it was just, it was just annoying. And then I, uh, the stripping of it was painful. You'll see in the videos in my vlog. And then showering was such a headache with the drains. Again, you'll see in the vlogs, me showering or getting ready to shower and what I had to do just to get the drains out of the way. Cause you can't shower with the drains hanging down. Like what? They're literally gonna fall out. Even though the drains were sewn to me, you'll like actually didn't show you, but it was sewn in my skin around the drain to keep it still, but still like, no, like just no. It was just too much. It was just annoying, but it was necessary. I'm glad I had the drains because then the fluid that was building up in my body, which is normal because I had a surgery, then that fluid can have somewhere to pool, right? To gather. And then I would be emptying it every few hours. So I'm glad I had the drains, but girl, it was annoying. How's the scarring? You look fab, by the way. Girl, thank you. The scarring is fantastic. Even my doctor is like, wow. <laughs> like she's so she's she's so encouraging, but she's she's like she's encouraging with like short words. Wow, you look good. And I'm like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> So my scars look fantastic, okay? They don't look horrendous. I am fine with them. I knew I would have scarring and I don't care. For me, the scars were worth how I look and how I feel. It was so worth it. Thank God I don't keloid and thank God I have not keloided. I know that the scars are going to get even better and softer and, and smoother as time goes on. Like she said, it'll be a year as everything settles in and, and really forms and settles in, is how I can say it. So I know that it will continue to transform form over that time, I feel like my scars look amazing. And even the one under my breast, I mean, I think they look fantastic. But a scar is a scar, okay? So I don't want you to think that there's nothing there. There's something there, okay? A scar is a scar. All right, I have scars, duh. But the, I said this in a vlog too, the scars from the areola down, almost invisible, literally invisible. Then you have the scars from the areas where the light bulb was done. So on brown skin, you know, it's very dark, you know, it's giving black, right? But that'll lighten over time and I'm okay with that. You know, I do a lot of skincare, so I am ready on deck with all of my AHA, BHA products to exfoliate. I just haven't done that yet because it's still too early for all that. But you and vitamin C, you already know me. I have an arsenal ready to attack these dark spots. It don't bother me. It don't bother me at all. She did give me a lotion that I'm using and I, it's called Reform. They sell it over there. I haven't heard of it. I don't know. I think the brand's called Reform. I don't know. I've shown it in, in several videos as well when I'm getting ready. And that is what, I have been using and maybe that's also been helping too. I do feel like the way the scars will look is based on genetics and also what treatment you're using. And she's got a treatment that we're supposed to use. And of course, there's also in some ways, these are my words, a warranty over the procedure. So that's just how I see it in my mind, a warranty. Because if you follow her instructions and for some reason some don't go right, at the year mark or close to, I believe it is, it's all in the contract, the whole write-up that I was given. And she also like has, she'll tell you this too. Well, she told me this, each time I go in and you know, if that doesn't go away, we can always look at it again. If that doesn't go, we can always fix it, you know? There's a warranty, if you will, where she can revise a certain area if something is just, if it didn't settle, this, this, this is in my words, if it didn't settle down, how I needed to settle down. Okay, that's just the way I, I have synthesized it in my brain. So that's also a nice thing too. And when I go into my doctor appointments, I'm not paying a fee each time I go see her. Like, are you insane? You know, I've already paid an arm and a leg, which I love. Again, the benefits of doing this in state, in the city, as opposed to going elsewhere, Elsewhere, I don't know, and you can let me know. If you have done this outside of the state or outside of the country, what do you do for follow-ups? Did you have follow-ups, you know? I mean, is it virtual? Is it video? Is it like never? I am really, really curious because I just, oh my gosh, the, per the kind of person I am, I'm not a, okay, thank you, goodbye, no. I'm a, hey, I'm experiencing this, can I come in? Like what, you know? And I, like, I've seen her maybe four times already in two months, you know? And one of those times I came in early because I had a question question about some hardness, which was normal. And I had text her, right? There's nothing too. She gave me her cell phone number and this is not just me. She gave me her cell phone number and I can call her or text her anytime and she responds right away. 
You feel me? So then she's like, you know, come in and see me. And I was in there in two days. You feel what I'm saying? Like, can I do that if I go to a different state or a different country? Maybe not. You know, I've heard of horror stories where once you leave, honey, they don't even know who you are. That is just so terrifying to me. And But I do understand what would make someone go somewhere cheaper. I get it because this is a very expensive procedure. And I get how it can feel so desperate if you feel very insecure about whatever the case is, right? I get it. 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 And I thank the Lord that I had the money to be able to do it in city, in state, just to be able to come to my house and just have that security and, and all these different things, right? So I get it, but I employ you with everything in me. Don't do it based on a sale. I just see some of these places running all these sales. Like it just feels like discount warehouse. It just feels like, you know, pay less services for your, your procedure. Now you may have gone to some of these places and had a fantastic result. And if you did, I thank God for that. You feel what I'm saying? But then I have seen literally with my own eyes and also watched videos of people who have done it and have huge regret. Now, you, you might argue that you could have huge regret and do it in your state too. That is very, very true. But my thing is how accessible is your doctor? I understand, but yo man, it's, it's, it's scary out here. It's scary out here. And uh, anyway, I'm just saying, I have diastasis. Can it lessen with consistent ab workouts? Girl, you know, I've had people say to me that it can. You'll see people doing ab workouts for those people that have diastasis you'll see stuff like that is it effective perhaps i don't know because i never did it i never focused on diastasis recti correction workouts i never did because i didn't think i had it i was like there's no way i'm like i just have this belly fat because whatever so before i had a different doctor tell me that i had diastasis and i was like get out of here like i was like okay whatever right i was like there's just no freaking way because i just didn't feel like i had it like my stomach didn't look the way that i thought that stomachs with diastasis looked like it wasn't wrinkly and all this stuff. It was more just round, but just out. <laughs> and I was like, there's just no way. Like, get out of here. I can still do ab workouts. I can still do things like what you mean, you know? But mine was just a different level and I did have it. So when she confirmed it in July 2022, I said, Jesus, God of mercy. Wow. Cause I originally just wanted to get lipo. And not only that, she's like, yeah, and with the excess skin, you're going to need tummy tuck for the kind of results that you want. So that's why again, with your, with your consultation, based on the results you want, they'll tell you what you need. If I had just gotten lipo, I would have a lot of excess skin and that would just, it wouldn't look the same. It wouldn't hit the way it needs to hit it just no 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 <laughs> like it just no 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 it wouldn't work you know and that's why again i get i get like oh my god but the tummy tuck will cost this and lipo will cost this let me just do lipo i get it believe me i get it i don't want to sound insensitive understand my heart but what i'm saying is it ain't gonna look the same so if you gotta get you know spend a little bit more time save some more money use care credit there are different platforms that you can use and that's for anything like dentists you know whatever you know you can get that financing use that responsibly and and then put it on there or put a portion on there, right? Maybe put a portion on cash and a portion on the care credit or whatever you call it, right? To get you where you gotta go, but uh -uh, it just it just won't be the same. Do you have a link to the zip dress that you wore to the hospital? Yes, I'll link it below. It's also in all of my videos from the surgery. Yeah, it's really cute. It's a, it's a, it has fleece on the inside. You can wear it like open. It's a, tr it's like a, not trench. I don't know how you call it, but it's so cute. It's, it's really, really cute. You look fire. Are you able to maintain a keto diet due to the surgery or is it on hold? Oh yeah, uh, yes to keto. Yes, yes, yes. I was keto the whole way through. I had one or two cheat days, but mm -mm, it didn't feel good. You know, when I cheat on keto and I have too many carbs, I have more swelling, right? Like I've already have an issue with swelling. And then with the surgery, you're gonna have the swelling. And then you wanna have like, no, 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 no. So I still do keto. I'm still gonna continue to keep, that is just my new lifestyle. It's been my lifestyle, it's not even new. If you've been here, you know that I've been on keto for three years and I love it. It has given me tremendous results. I heard with a tummy Tuck, doctors can only lipo out one liter of fat in Texas, but I see more taken. <laughs> When I saw this, I laughed and I get it. I get it. Cause like I said, I'm looking extremely snatched. But remember, I don't know how much she took out. I won't lie to you. I need to actually ask her to tell y'all. Cause I don't even know. I never asked. So the thing you gotta remember is that I've lost weight. I've lost what? 10 or 11 pounds. That's one. And then I already have that small waist. I have the space between my rib cage and the hip bone. So once that fat and that skin is down, honey, I'm like, when I wear my skin, the skims, I mean, the waist is in, like it goes almost like, a V. Like, I'm not even kidding, okay? Because 
the fat and the skin is just taken. So it just does what it does, you know? And I already had that shape of body. Is it fat that caused the bulge from the diastasis recti condition? Yes, I had a lot of belly fat, that's number one. And then from my understanding with the diastasis, yes, the bulge is from the contents of the stomach protruding from the middle of the ab muscles. So if you look right here, for instance, you have the abs that go down. This was to go down and be connected, but with diastasis, it'll go like around. So then in the middle, your stomach contents, like this is, this is again, this is just me using my words. Okay. The stomach contents are like poking through the middle. You feel what I'm saying? So then when she sews it, there's no way for the stomach contents to be poking through the middle. This is my bootleg version of explaining it. Okay. So it was belly fat and the diastasis with my stomach contents pushing out. You sew it in so that the stomach contents can go back to where they need to be in the stomach or in the abdomen. And then on the outside, all the belly fat is like sucked out. And then the extra skin pulled down and cut off. Like when you do that, honey, it's snatch season. You feel what I'm saying? Did you get to drive around or did hubby have to drive you around until you completely healed? Okay. So I didn't drive until like maybe day 10 and I got to look at the vlog because I'm still editing. I didn't drive until maybe day 10. And uh, I was, I was at that point, I was off of the code obviously so off of the hard, the hard drugs and I of course was still experiencing some pain I won't this is a mean that I, I completely had no pain I was still experiencing some pain but I was ready I listen I'm a go-getter you'll see in the vlogs too a lot of times I know many of you might be thinking like why don't you ask for help why are you doing that yourself sit down ask for help I'm just not that kind of person it's not about pride but it's more so I can do it I can do it and I will challenge myself. If I like a challenge, I'm up for it. I want to do it myself. So around day 10, I believe it was, yeah, I was driving. I mean, you know, I was being careful. I was moving slowly. I was, you know, but I was driving. Before that, did I have to get dri driven around? Absolutely. What? Oh my God. Don't forget, I had the garment on with the board and it was just so stiff that even to drive, it was like, like this, you know? It's not maneuverable. How do I say it? So it's just so stiff. So even the driving was kind of like, oh God. But you know, I wasn't like driving to San Antonio, but I was driving I just wanted, I wanted to do stuff. I, I don't like to just feel incapacitated. So yeah, I, I would say around day 10, if I remember correctly. I was trying. Did you only do lipo or BBL? I did lipo, tummy tuck, and breast lift. And let's actually talk about that. So in my vlogs, I've mentioned a few times that I did not get a BBL, that I got what I just told you, right? And with the way that I am, I say things very matter-of-factly, sometimes in a funny way, sometimes not, just very direct, right? I'm just like, just boom, this is what it is. And I have recognized that in for some people that has been a trigger and it can come across like I am shaming those who have had a BBL. The fact of the matter is that is not my intention. It may sound like that, but that's not my intention. So if I've said something that seems shady to the BBL warriors, and I say this because I, uh, first of all, I heard it on TikTok, okay? Somebody was like, BBL warriors and I laughed because I was like, that's funny. I mean, you could call me cosmetic surgery warrior, like it wouldn't offend me, right? But I do understand that what might not offend me might still offend somebody else. But I say that because I know, yes, I went through a lot of pain, but the BBL people, like women who get the BBL, that joint is too, because you can't even sit. Like literally I was explaining how somebody had, I had seen her getting driven to the massage place and she was laying down and she's on her knees and all this stuff. Like it is serious. Like all, all of this stuff that we all do or have done, is extremely painful, right? I recognize that. I mean, I just freaking went through it on my own. But when I say something like that, that my intention is not to insult. All of us have had cosmetic surgery, okay? So we're all in the same boat. Like when I see somebody and I think they have something done, honey, I'll just ask, oh girl, did you get, you know, did you get some work done? Yes, I had work done, right? I'm not ashamed of it. And that's why that's why I share it online because I'm not ashamed of it. So what I'm saying here is, if I've said something that's uh, offensive, if you've had a BBL, that is not my intention, okay? Please understand that. That's not my intention. If it triggers something in you, perhaps just consider if maybe it's an insecurity that you have, right? If I was insecure about, and I don't say that to be rude either. I'm just saying, like, you, have to just, you gotta just know, like, is she trying to be rude or is she not? I'm not trying to be rude, okay? Now, what I'm saying is if I was insecure about my surgery, I would not have said a word. Do you hear me? I would have just told y'all that I lost weight, which I did. And I wouldn't have said a word. I would have let y'all speculate and I would have left it as of what it was. And I would have ignored everything. You feel me? I would have filtered out all the stuff and then I would have just pretended like nothing was nothing. But I'm confident in what I did and I'm not ashamed of it. And I wanted to share so that other women who are thinking about it can have information from, from my experience. So with that, 
I have said many a times that I did not get a BBL because I did not get a BBL. Like I'm sitting down at seven weeks. Can I sit down at seven weeks to be a BBL? I don't know, right? You tell me. I say, I, I keep on saying it because I'm being so transparent with what I have done that I don't want to be accused of doing something else that I did not do. And that is why in my vlogs, I've mentioned it quite a few times. And uh, I understand that some of the ways that I've mentioned it might be offensive, but like, oh my God, that is not my intention, okay? So to answer your question, no, I did not get a BBL. I just got the things that I just told you. I've always had a dumb Donkey donk, you feel me? I was teased for it growing up and now, honey, all the girls want one, you feel me? <laughs> See when I say that, that is not offensive. It's the truth. Let me, let me, let me, let me correct that. That is not meant to be offensive, right? And I did a video on this too, before the surgery. There are gonna be times where I don't mean to be offensive, but what I've said or done has offended you, right? So because I know that, I'm not gonna beat myself up knowing that to offend you was not my intention. But of course, with my platform, I'm saying this now, like I've said before, it is not my intention to offend anybody. And it certainly is not my intention, especially with this sharing my, my surgery procedures to offend anyone that has had a BBL, wants to get a BBL. I mean, I'm not being offensive at all. Do I sometimes say things cheekily, right? In a cheeky way, like this ain't no BBL, this is homegrown. Yes, I do. What the heck? I do. And I'm entitled to say that. That's what I want to say. It's my body. It's my mouth. It's my platform. I'm going to say it. Like, this is my body. <laughs> you know, I'm entitled to say that. How long did it take your swelling to go down after surgery? Well, it went down tremendously in the beginning and it's still a work in progress. So even today, I don't have on my garment now, right? Cause I'm washing mine and I can feel some swelling at the top. So above the belly button, I have some swelling and the bottom is, is like really, really flat. And she said that that's normal. And that's why I am to keep on the skims because of that. Like it will just swell and it just feels better. It does, it does really just feel better to have something on that's tight cause I'm so used to it and then it keeps the stomach down while it's healing. So if I don't have anything on, it'll swell. When I have something on, it keeps it down. It just compresses it down. And I'm not supposed to be wearing any kind of waist trainer, just the skims, something soft. Because you'll see in my vlog that I had gotten to a point where the garment that I had on was doing me like a, like a Capri Sun. So squeeze a Capri Sun, what do you have? Fluid at the top and the bottom. So it was isolating out my flanks, the love handles, and then the the area above, like above the bra, like where the bra would be. And that wasn't going down. It was just sitting there. So now when I wear the skims, it can compress everything. And not only that, I'm still doing massages twice a week. In fact, I have one today after I filmed this video. Proud of you, sis. What's the pain level on a scale of zero to 10? <laughs> On a scale of zero to 10, madame, this, the pain is at 12. <laughs> Woo, honey, I'm not gonna lie to you, baby. I'm not gonna lie to you, honey, this, the pain, the pain. Mm -mm. But again, I have a high tolerance, you feel me? So I just dealt with it, but honey, the pain is the pain, the pain is the pain. And really, it's the lipo, like I said, right? The abs being tight and hard and all that stuff. Like, yeah, but I'm trying to be careful with my words because if I say to you, like, after a week or a week and a half, I was good. Okay, that doesn't mean that I had zero pain after a week and a half or a week. I would say that at that point, my pain was maybe a five. I don't want to be misleading, you know, but, yo. Know, the light bulb is the, the lingering pain, man. And it might just be a pain for a sec, like when I get up from the bed. I mean, when I get the massages, that's a whole different pain and it hurts right then. But then when she stops, I'm okay. So it just depends on what I'm doing or what's being done to me, like the massage, you know? The first week or week and a half, the pain is like a freaking, well, I stopped my codone. So if I stopped my codone, I guess you could surmise that perhaps the pain wasn't that bad, right? When I stopped the codone, I would say that the pain was maybe a six or a seven. And I just didn't want to be on codeine anymore. I just didn't want to, right? I mean, I don't mind medicine, but if I didn't need to, I didn't want to, you feel what I'm saying? Right now, oh my God, right now, let's say the pain is like a one and a half, you know? It's just when I get the massage and she's rubbing my skin in the back, it can kind of hurt a little bit. Now I gotta think about it because depending on what she's using, when she uses that wood, when she's doing wood therapy, forget it, she's a slam. So it just, it just, ugh, it just depends, you feel me? Oh my God, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's just, it's all relative, but it's brief. 
it's brief. Do I have lingering, long lasting, prolonged pain right now? No. If you don't mind me asking, what did you get surgery for? Well, I wonder if she means what areas of my body that I get surgery for, or does she mean why did I get it? I got it, I'll answer both. I already answered like what I got, and it's also in the description box down below. But why did I get it? Because I was not happy with how I looked, and I was not happy with how I felt. I have been on a diet and working out for a long time, and the stomach was just stomaching. When I sucked it in, it was okay, and when I didn't, it was just terrible. Being okay wasn't 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 okay for me. I was just tired of just okay. Originally I wanted a lipo. Then I realized it was tummy tuck. So originally I was gonna just do tummy tuck and lipo. But then I thought to myself, while I'm here, why not do my breast as well? My breast was not my main issue. It was my abdomen. But I said, while I'm here, why not just do my breast as well and just have those girls sitting up too? And I was like, dang, that's another, you know, several thousands of dollars. Like, God, right? But then I said, you know what? I just want it to be one and done. I don't wanna go do the stomach and then it's so flat but then the titties are like sitting on it. So I figured let's just get this one and done over now. So then I just did all of it. And I am happy that I did that as opposed to now being like, oh my God, I want a breast lift now. You know, like I would have done it, but I don't want to have to go twice, but I don't have to. So how do you decide on your doctor? We talked about that. What were the factors? The factors was my girl looked good. I liked that she gave you her personal cell phone number. I liked that she was accessible. I liked that they were, she was here in Houston. I liked that I could come home the same day. I liked that she did all of the things in one day. I'm not gonna do five different days of surgery. I liked that she was was double board certified. I liked that she was a woman. When I met with her, we gelled so well. It was like talking to a girlfriend. I liked that she was young. I liked that she was relatable. Like she was just relatable. I felt like she could be a friend of mine, honest to God. Like outside of this, I felt like we could be friends. No lies, right? So all of that just made me very, very comfortable that I thought this is great, right? You don't have to choose your OBGYN if you don't want to. There are lots of different ones. You don't even have to choose your dentist if you want to. There are lots of different ones. So for me at my age, if I'm gonna give you my money, whether it's through my insurance company or if it's just through my cash money my on my own, I wanna make sure that I can relate to you. Like, do I feel like talking to you is easy? If, if it feels like it's by force, I'm not gonna do it, right? Coming to you is not by force. Choosing you is also not by force. I'm using my own money to do this. So if I don't feel comfortable with you for any reason, I'm gonna go with somebody else. And I loved how when I met with her for an hour and a half that day for the consultation, it just felt easy. If I felt awkward, if I felt like she wasn't listening to me, even through the, the different uh, pre-op pre appointments and, and everything, the, the morning of, I mean, she's just so funny and relatable that if I felt like it was stush or whatever, I would not have gone with her. And even with every appointment thus far, she's just so easy to talk to. She's real chill. That's what made my my decision wicked easy. I finished my makeup. This is a long video. I'm glad you watched it. Hopefully I answered all your questions. Watch my survey playlist. It's gonna take you from beginning to end. I'm sharing as much as I can because it is YouTube, you know, but I hope this answered a lot of your questions. Do you have any more? Leave them below. Share your experiences with me because I would like to know. And of course, always know that I'm glad you're here and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.